G'day everybody, Sam Marwood here from Cultivate Farms and welcome to episode 52 of Cultivate Farms TV. We take it behind the scenes, all we're doing to make it possible for you to own a farm. That is what we love, that is what we're passionate about and that is what we want to get you guys inspired to do, get on your dream farm. Or if you're a retiring farmer, how to um, step back and back a, a very clever aspiring farming family or a person onto a, a farm. And if you're an investor looking to invest into farms, we have the best people for you to, to farm with. So uh, let's get cracking again, a lot to get through. Welcome, Tegan Hicks, uh, co-founder of Cultivates. Um, first, three things we're gonna talk about today and a, and a bunch of others, how to compete with corporates who are buying farms. Got some ideas on that. Uh, how to convince a road retiring farmer to back you and we talk about a couple of big farms we have matched, which is super awesome. Um, so let's get started. Every week we talk about the number of members we have signed up, and this time the number is at 334 aspiring farmers from Australia who have signed up onto our database, which is brilliant. That's eight more than last week. We encourage everyone who is interested in becoming a farmer to sign up. Uh, there's a free account, there's also an account, $150 to sign up for a year, uh, which gets you access to us and a few other cool things. Um, so I encourage you to sign up, uh, it supports us, it helps us build momentum, um, and the more momentum we get, the more farm opportunities for you guys, so please uh, have a crack at that. And also if you haven't filled in your details, please do, I'll explain why uh, a bit later in this episode. So a quick wrap of the week. Uh, just three quick rapid fire things. We're looking to get another corporate sponsor on board. Had some awesome discussions over the last couple of months. This is uh, to add to our list of Observant and Mercado. We have one more being added who are quite large and great uh, people. Um, we feel they align with our values, so we're going to have a, a crack at getting that all signed up. So more details to come soon. Um, if you are looking to get capital to buy livestock, which we know is an issue for many people. Uh, even Tim and Tegan, co-founders, had that issue. We think we have found a solution. We're working with our good mate, Mitch Hughes, who's developing a thing called Lovestock, which is about crowdfunding or finding new ways of getting capital to get um, uh, to either lease or co-invest uh, with others in, with Lovestock, which is awesome. It's got a great name, Lovestock. Brilliant. We're going to put a survey out very soon. I interviewed Mitch the other day uh, via video, and we're going to promote this. We would love your support in, help, in setting this business up. Um, and then also spoke to about a half a dozen aspiring farmers and, and also half a dozen retiring farmers this week. So constantly talking to you guys. We want to learn more and more about what you need and we work through specific solutions uh, to get onto your farm. How to get on to your dream farm the quickest. We've always said this, it's dealing with retiring farmers. If you can somehow convince a retiring farmer to back you and that you are very clever and dedicated and someone they should trust, you are well on the way to getting onto your dream farm and we advocate this is the best way of, of doing it. But a lot of people say to us, how do you find these retiring farmers? And then once you've found them, how do you go about convincing them that you are the best person and how do you do it in a way that is not awkward? Uh, we get it, we understand how awkward it can be driving up a driveway. Uh, and asking someone, hey, what are you doing with your farm? Can I have it? That We recommend that is not the way to do it. We have this idea which we think is an absolute winner. It's around bringing real value. Um, and we think you need to do it um, off the cuff, uh, do it for free, and provide retiring farmers something of real value. So to get us into this topic a bit more, I'll give you an example. Say if you're in a freelance videographer, uh, freelance, sorry, uh, videographer, uh, and you're out there trying to get work, you're just starting out, one way that you can get the attention of organisations or people who would pay you on going to create your videos is to actually create a video for that person or organisation tailored just for them, uh, which is a real value, uh, really great quality, and you give it to them for free. So this opens the door to them straight away. You can put it, send them a message, send the attachment, and they will watch it. And maybe one or two of those people, if you do this for, say for 10, will say, well, that is brilliant, really appreciate it, and we have actually more work to do and we'd love to employ you. So this ability of providing value for free opens doors to people who can influence the rest of your life. And we love this concept in terms of retiring farmers. So imagine if you had your list of retiring farmers in the district that you want to farm, and you sat down and thought of a list of all the things you could provide for free, which are high value, that you can just do off, off your own bat for these retiring farmers. We've got a big list here and I'll go through them, 
but I think this could be an awesome way for you to get in touch with these retiring farmers and slowly get a relationship built and conversations going and you never know where that could lead. So things like offer to farm sit their farm while they're away so they can finally go on holidays and do it for free. They might have machinery lying around that you know how to fix. Just say, hey, I'd love to fix it just to build my skills up. So use it as a way to say that I'm here to learn for myself as well and I'd love to learn on your farm. Um, offer to feed their livestock once a week um, uh, because you've got some spare time. Things like showing their cattle at the local show. Uh, let them know you'd be happy to help out with drenching or shearing or milking whenever they might need a hand. Do that for free. Offer to fix a fence or two because you want to get your fencing skills up to scratch. Build them a new mailbox, probably a bit random. Uh, fix their front gate because you want to improve your welding skills. Make them a meal during lambing, shearing, carving season because you know how flat out it is. Uh, write a land care grant or another grant for them. Um, uh, find free stuff on Facebook Marketplace that you know they need and get it for them, give it to them. Uh, stitch up a better price for the livestock or their produce uh, through people you know. Promote a cause that they care about on social media or, or help fundraise for it. Um, there's heaps of things. You've got skills that you know that you're good at. You can offer that to these people and it may not go anywhere, uh, but it could open the door to an opportunity that could change your life forever. You need to give them something of value and for free and do it off your own bat. Um, don't just go in there for the ask, build a relationship. Um, and we know, we know this is rock solid advice. I'm really excited by this. So I'd love to hear if anyone is out there scheming now to do this. Um, do this for the right reasons though. Um, uh, approach it uh, with a positive mindset. Think about stuff that can provide real value and that could open the doors uh, to uh, life-changing scenarios, uh, i.e. these retiring farmers wanting to back you onto their farm. How could you compete with corporates wanting to buy farms? This is a question that we get a lot. Um, you hear it all the time, saying, people saying that corporates are coming in, investors are coming in and uh, buying all the land, putting up the prices and making it possible, impossible for anyone to get onto a farm, especially aspiring farmers. We've been thinking about this a lot and we're never going to solve that problem around making farms cheaper. Um, the prices are probably always going to go up. Uh, there's not much we can do about it. but. There is one thing that stands you as an aspiring farmer, a clever, dedicated, passionate person uh, who loves your community. And the difference between you and a corporate is you, is your ability to build relationships, is your ability to find a retiring farmer, to convince them that you are in this for the right reasons, that you are passionate, that you are clever, that you're there to help them. Uh, and if you can build a relationship with someone uh, like that who has the ability to back you onto their farm, you are out competing a, co a corporate or investor straight away. Um, let's say uh, a corporate or someone goes to a retiring farmer and offers them uh, to buy their farm, this retiring farmer probably might say, actually, I know Mary, and Mary and I have been talking for the last couple of years, she is amazing, I actually want to back her, um, so they come and have a discussion with you about how you could transition the ownership and say, this is not about a charity or a handout, you're going to have to work for it, but I want you to have the farm, how about it? That is how you outcompete others. Uh, you have an unfair advantage to corporates and to anybody because of your relationships and because of you being out there showing how passionate you are about getting onto your farm. So you don't have to complain about anyone else. There is nothing holding you back from getting on your farm. It's all about how much time and energy you want to put in to building relationships with the people who can make your farming dreams a reality. Again, we think is, this is awesome advice. Um, there are, guys, really no excuses for how you can get onto your farm. Just get out there and hustle. Um, you can outcompete anybody. You can. Let us know what you think. We'd love to hear some feedback on that one. So, Weekly Times have done a, a feature article on us, which is awesome, and a bit of a focus on uh, me coming up with lots of ideas. So there's probably a few things that I've been working on in the background that uh, regular followers probably don't know about, but I'm, I'm keen to uh, explore. You can see the link there. Uh, we'll grab the Weekly Times uh, today to grab it. We've been very humbled to have uh, this uh, report pulled together or, or um, uh, article. And the article does talk about me being an ideas man, which I guess is a bit embarrassing but uh, I suppose I am and I'm working on a couple of other projects in conjunction with Cultivate Farms all tied together um, and I suppose these spawned from my passion of creating ideas and finding solutions to problems uh, I, yeah I really I just love it I, I love fine and I guess that's why I love Cultivate Farms so much because this is such an entrenched problem the ability for 
next generation farmers to own their land. Um, so being able to have a fair bite at that is is fun. I really enjoy it. Um, most of my ideas are terrible, but there's some that work okay, and I guess that's a skill I want to keep building. So one is called Edge Pledge, and it outlines in the article as well. This is a wildlife fundraising platform, uh, edgepledge.com. So I'm an environmental scientist by trade. I worked for the Victorian government for many years, having grown up on a dairy farm uh, previous to that. Um, and I just thought that we need a new way to find money to support the environment. Um, a lot of funding is dependent on government, so where's, where's the Movember for the environment? So we've, we've created it, um, and we've raised $60,000 for the last couple of years for 11 environmental organisations across Australia. So it's pretty cool. We've got some fun little concepts there. And the other one is a, another not-for-profit. Uh, it's called Odonata. Uh, and you can check it out, odonata.org.au, and it's with uh, Impact Investor and... Uh, who's been a massive supporter of ours. Uh, Coldway Farms would not be here without their support. Uh, and it's about incubating businesses and entrepreneurs who are doing good for agriculture and the environment and finding, getting them investment ready and finding investors for them. Uh, they're big supporters of what we're doing in Coldway Farms. Uh, I'll be announce, announcing more over time about that, but um, you can check that out online to see what we're doing. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty passionate about solving problems and uh, happy to chat to anyone who's got ideas, whether it's related to agriculture or not. Uh, if anyone's out there who wants to kick around ideas, I'm more than open to having a chat, so please let us know. Match farming successes. Uh, so we recently have had two retiring farmers get matched with uh, aspiring farmers each, which is brilliant. These are quite big, big farms, so 3,500 acres north of, uh, in central Victoria and around 4,500 acres uh, sort of southern New South Wales. Uh, so big, big time farms and uh, we've got s some very <laughs> lucky and happy aspiring farmers have been matched. So we're, we're still working through the details of this, but these retiring farmers are very uh, happy with how we've gone about this. They've found people that they are confident in and um, they trust, which is what we're trying to do, find the right people who align with their values and uh, want to take the farming um, to the same, on the same direction and the same path. So we're, everyone's excited. Uh, it's going to unfold over the next couple of months, the details. So I'd love to keep you guys updated with how that all unfolds. Um, for one of them, we advertised on our website and that got promoted and that's how the aspiring farmer uh, got matched. Uh, the other, we actually didn't promote that. It was just sent to a handful of current members in the area that we know um, and it just happened to be that one aspiring farmer was going past this retiring farmer's property and they met up and they got along. So that's it. That's how it works. So that's why I want to encourage you, if you're not a member, please sign up as a member. Just get your details there so we can send you uh, farm opportunities that we might not advertise broadly because they're so uh, red hot, ready to go, or we know they're going to be perfect for a certain farmer. Um, so please sign up as a member. But these are very exciting uh, opportunities. We love, we're going to use these as, as big case studies um, to attract even more farmers. A tropical horticulture farm in Northern Territory sitting waiting for you to become the farmer. Uh, if you're an aspiring farmer interested in farming in Nord Northern Territory, in horticulture, this is a great opportunity. The owner is a, a bit of a local legend, uh, keen to step back, keen to back someone onto the farm. So it's 350 hectares, it's a market garden, orchard, um, uh, 80, so 80 hectares of uh, uh, irrigated land, it says irrigable, that's not a word. Uh, and about 243 hectares of grazing land, 50k south of uh, Catherine, I think it's south. Um, uh, yeah, they're looking for someone to step step into the operation. They've been organic for 25 years. That's got to be some sort of record. Um, and yeah, beautiful, beautiful environment. You can check out the there's a photo or two online. Um, we guys want you to check it out. It is a great opportunity. This is what we're doing. We're trying to find great farms like this one, putting it online and if you are good enough and if you want it it's there for you to have a crack what you need to do is fill out a basic proposal we've got a template on the website on the farms tab uh, fill that out it's a page or two shouldn't take you too much time to do it we send it to the farmer and then you go and meet up with the farmer if they'd like to go further so please check out that farm in northern territory and now finally, farm opportunities. We've got 14 farms uh, ready to go, including that Northern Territory one I just spoke about. Please have a check online. Share the page with anyone you know who wants to be a farmer because these are red hot farms ready to go, can work for you. Um, and these people, retiring farmers, want to give you ownership, which is what we're all about. Um, we can't do much more than that. We're going to have, we've got three I'm about to load this week as well. So please keep on a lookout online. Uh, we'll be sending emails out to people who match 
to those farms as well in our membership database. Guys, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, please reach out. Always love chatting to everyone. Um, we're probably a little bit slow nowadays uh, getting back to you, but I'm trying to get on top of that. Um, and we'll speak soon. Cheers. Thank you.